Let's attempt the 64th weekly math challenge. And in terms of the length of the problem statement, this is the longest challenge yet. So let's carefully work our way down, making sure we understand what's going on. So a dick path of length 2n, where n is a positive integer, is a sequence of n u's and n d's such that the number of d's never exceeds the number of u's at any point in the sequence, read from left to right. For example, u u d u d d and u u u d d d are dick paths of length 6, so we have 3 u's and 3 d's, total of 6. And as you can see as we are reading this from left to right, we always have more than or equal number of u's compared to these. Let's read on, but u d d u and u u u d d are not valid dick paths. Well, u, d, d, u, you have one u, then you have two d's. So at this point in the sequence, so right before the final u, you have more d's than u's, which is not valid. And also u, 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 d, d, we gotta have the same number of u's and d's, so u, 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 d, d is not a valid dick path. And a dick path q contains a dick path s if s is a subsequence of q. For example, u, u, d, u, d, d contains u, u, d, d. Notice that this pattern does not have to be consecutive. As long as you have the pattern from left to right contained inside, we say q contains s. And we know that q avoids s if q does not contain s. As a helpful note, we, there is another way of visualizing a dick pass other than characterizing them as a sequence of u's and d's. You can actually think of u's as a positive arrow. You can think of it as a vector, 1, 1. So you're going 1 to the right, 1 up. And d's as the vectors, 1, negative 1, where you're going 1 to the right and 1 down. So for example, a dick pass u, d, u, d is going to look like this. And also, because a dick pass always have more or the same number of u's than these, you are never going to go below the x-axis, because if you go below the x-axis, that means you had more d's than u's at that point. So a dick pass of length 2n is a pass from 0, 0 to 2 and 0 on the Cartesian plane, such that we take the steps u and d's, and we never go below the x-axis. So for example, u, u, d, u, d, d looks like this. U, u, d, u, d, d. Anyway, let's see what the question is. Let a dick pass of length 2n be good if it satisfies the following conditions. First, it avoids u, d, u, d, u, d. So it does not contain u, d, u, d, u, d as a subsequence. And the nth and n plus first terms of the dick pass are d and u respectively. So we know we're going to have this du right at the center. And we want to let a sub n be the number of good dick pass of length 2n. Find the last three digits when we add up all the a sub n's from n equals to 3 to 2018 inclusive. Now, if you have not tried this question before, I highly encourage you to pause the video now or any time during this video and try to work it out if you have any ideas. Anyway, before we actually discuss the solution, I want to recognize Vishal Ram, who was the very first person to correctly answer this question with the answer 80. And I understand that Vishal Ram's answer was edited, but I was actively watching the comment section after posting this challenge, and I know for sure that Vishal Ram was the first correct explanation and that the explanation was correct before the edit. So I decided to accept this answer in this case, but in general, the answer cannot be edited if you want it to be accepted. Now let's see what we can make out of this question. So we know we are considering dick paths that avoids u, d, u, d, u, d, and we know for sure that a dick path has to start with a u and end with a d. If it does not start with a u, well, you're going down below the x-axis right away, you cannot have that. And you cannot end with a u because that would imply that you went below the x-axis and you're coming back up to touch the x-axis at the end. So you know, the starting point is u and the ending point is d. So we know our dick pass has this u and at the end we have this d where this is the point 1, 0 and we're going all the way to point 2, n, 0 because the length is 2n. And we also put the restriction that the nth and n plus first terms are d and u respectively. Those are the terms right at the center because 2n is even. 
So we know we're going to have D, then U, where this is precisely, and 0. And of course, a DU can be down here. DU can go like this. Or DU, in the most extreme case, can go be all the way below. Now let's take into account the fact that this dick pass has to avoid UD, UD, UD. So UD, UD, UD. Let me write that down so we don't forget. And we see, just by looking at this diagram, we already have U, D, U, D. And this means that if our dick pass contains du as we are moving from this point to this point then everything is over because we are going to have u d u d u d so we have to avoid the du between these two points and by the same reasoning we have to avoid the du here as well and what does this imply well if you want to avoid the du the only way that's going to happen is if you have a series of u's followed by series of d's so you can have a bunch of U's followed by a bunch of D's. But if we have anything else, if we alternate from U, D and back to U, or D, U then back to D, then we are bound to contain D, U. So we know for sure we're going to have a series of U's followed by a series of D's, and by the same reasoning, we're going to have a series of U's followed by a series of D's between these two points. And there's one more thing I want to point out. As you're moving from 0, 0 all the way to 2 and 0, we are going to have n u's and n d's. We have stated that before. So n u's and n d's. And obviously, if you do not have n u's and n d's, you're not going to hit the x axis at the end. And this implies that if we know the number of u's, so once we fix the number of u's right here, then that automatically determines the number of u's right there because the number of u's have to add up to n. And also, as we're moving from 0, 0 to n0, we have to have n u's and d's combined. So we know that once we pick the number of u's here, number of d's is also determined here and that automatically determines this as well. So my main point is, once you pick the number of u's right there such that you actually have a dick pass, then this thing, this thing, and this thing are automatically chosen as well. So the only thing we have to worry about as we are counting this is the number of u's that we start this sequence with. So how many u's can we start this sequence with? Well, it seems intuitive that we may want to do a casework on whether n is even or odd because whether n is even or odd is going to determine the possible positions of du at the center. So let me go to the right. So let's start by considering the case where n is even, where n is equal to 2k for some integer k, in this case a positive integer. So in this case we have the point n0 here and all the way we have point 2 and 0. And obviously this point, if we extend it all the way, this point is going to be n n. Of course we are not going to hit this point because we have to have a du at the center. And n n in this case can be written as 2k 2k. And realize that if we have four u's in a row, then we are going to hit the point with the y coordinate 2k minus 2. We are going down by 2 because instead of going 1, 1, now we are going 1, negative 1. So that's going to bring us down by 2. And if we have a three u's in a row at the start, then that's going to bring us to 2k minus 4 all the way to 0. So in this case, the possible y coordinate of the center point is 2k minus 2. 2k minus 4 all the way to 0 decreasing by 2 each time and each of them corresponds to one and only one sequence of consecutive u's so in this case number of possibilities is k because you have k possibilities written out right here starting with 2 times k minus 1 we're going all the way to 2 times 0 and starting with the number 0 2k minus 1 we have k numbers so that's the answer when n is even. Now let's consider the case when n is odd. So let's let n be 2k plus 1. Well, in this case, so this point once again is nn or 2k plus 1, 2k plus 1. We can either go down and hit the point where the y coordinate is 2k minus 1 if we, if we have the maximum number of u's in a row. If we reduce that number of u's by 1, you're going to go down to 2k minus 3 and you're going to keep on going down until you hit 1. And in this case, you hit 1 just the second step. So in this case, we have a 2k minus 1 as one possibility, 2k minus 3 as another possibility, all the way to 1. 
because we are going down by 2 each time. And the number of odd positive integers from 1 to 2k minus 1 is going to be k, so we have a k in this case as well. So another way of summarizing this is that a sub n, the number that we want, is equal to floor of n over 2. Note that this formula works when n is equal to 2k or 2k plus 1. So knowing this formula, now let's actually finish the question. So we know a sub n is floor of n over 2. And if you're not familiar with the floor function, that simply means we are rounding down. So if we have a floor of 3 over 2, that's 1 because 1.5 rounded down is 1. So what do we want to evaluate? Well, we want to sum this up from 3 to 2018. Well, if we think about a sub 4 plus a sub 6 all the way to a sub 2018, we are adding up 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus all the way to 2009. And if we consider a sub 3 plus a sub 5 all the way to a sub 2017, in this case, we are adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 2008. 2017 divided by 2, floor that, that gets you 1008. So we want to sum up these two expressions. And that's simply the sum of the positive integers from 1 to 1009 times 2. And we gotta take away the missing 1 and the missing 1009. And this entire thing by arithmetic series formula is 1009 times 1010. And we are taking away 1010. And this is obviously congruent to 9 times 10 minus 10 mod 1000. So this thing is going to be congruent to 80 mod 1000, which means the last three digits are 80. If you don't know modular arithmetic, one possible way is for you to actually multiply this out. Or you may realize that 1009 is 1000 plus 9. And when you multiply 1010 by that, multiplying 1000 by 1010, the result is not going to change the last three digits because you're going to get 000. So we only care about 9 times 10. And we want to take away 10 in the last three digits, getting us 80. So that's some intuition on why modular arithmetic works. Anyway, so the final answer for this question is 80.